Okay, lovely. Um, we've got our teams in, which is amazing. Excellent. I think we're just waiting on Mike. He'll be Not Mike Bray, the other <laughs> Mike. It's too many mics. Hi, Mike. Hi, Amanda. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Lovely, okay. So I think we're we're getting there. I can see that Mike is joined us. Fantastic, lovely. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Hello and welcome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a bit of a panic. I was I could see everybody and hear everybody, but I couldn't um, actually access at all. So I'm quite oh. pleased. Oh, so cool. Whoever made that happen, thank you. I was just starting to freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Great, lovely. Thank I think we all had our moments in joining in a little bit yeah, and freaking exactly. out. So good that we are there. Great. Okay. Hi, so you, if, How are you doing? Hi, hello. So what we're going to we're going to start now. We're going to make a start. Um can I just get a thumbs up from from our support system that we are streaming live as well? Okay, okay, thumbs up. I see I, I see a hand go up. So um, that's good. Right. So let's do this. Right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to what is going to be an absolutely inspiring two hours of People, Planet, Product at the Students Challenge. It really gives me great pleasure to um, welcome you to what I think is absolutely instrumental um, in terms of ensuring that we have the right minds to solve our world problems. These type of student challenges are um, really, really, really um, necessary, especially in 2021. Um, and, and what we have today is the combination of two great forces. Um, we've got Nav and the team at uh, the washing machine project and RS component working together um, to inspire the next generation of engineers, of innovators, of creatives, of, you know, of technologists to be able to solve world problems. Um, and this collaboration um, is going to, in my view, um, be the continuation of great things, of people thinking specifically about the issues that are scalable in terms of the potential solutions that can come out of them. It gives me great pleasure to welcome the Chief Operating Officer of RS Components, Mike England, to uh, introduce us to the judges and to welcome us to the event as well. Mike, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Yoande. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here um, and to support this really worthwhile event um, today and thank you to all of you taking the time to join from wherever you are around the world. Um, a huge welcome to the 2021 People Planet Product Student Design Competition and uh, I always get quite excited about live finals um, so uh, in my mind everybody is already a winner um, because the contributions have just been so fantastic so I'm very excited on what's to come and, and I'm sure you know like me and, and, and as we've already discussed we're really passionate about the importance of education and developing the skills to solve real world problems. I think this is something, I think this is something that really resonates with everybody here today. It certainly does with us. And I really do believe that between us all, we've got the skills to create a much more sustainable future. And here, certainly at RS Components, our purpose as a company is making amazing happen for a better world. And we're very proud that we've just launched uh, our Better World 2030 program, of which the work that we're doing with the washing machine project 
uh, and the partnership that we have is a real key component of that. So great uh, that Nav uh, is here with us today and you're going to be hearing uh, much more from him, both as a judge, so don't be too worried, um, but also he's going to talk to you a little bit more later. We're immensely proud to support Nav and the whole of the Washroom Machine project. Um, this is a real social enterprise dedicated to innovating solutions um, for low income and displaced people around the world. And what a worthy cause. And I've certainly been blown away and humbled um, by the work that the Washing Machine Project is doing. We're really proud that our teams are helping with fundraising. Uh, we've uh, allocated volunteering days. We donate parts. And importantly, we're having some fun working together um, to, uh, to make a better world. So certainly that the People product um, uh, student design challenge was really launched to inspire engineering and innovation and empower um, our global communities. Um, and that's something that we really do believe in here today. Um, the challenge creates a, a unique opportunity for students to advance the design and accessibility of the, of, of the um, Divya manual crank washing machine that you'll hear more about later, which really is improving lives. Um, so let's move on. And we've got a real pleasure today of hearing um, from six finalists today. Uh, and we're really excited um, to hear from these very talented young innovators who will be pitching their solutions to you and also to our incredible judges. Um, so let me just quickly talk about the judges today. Uh, we've got uh, Navyat, um, he's the founder of the Washing Machine Project, so I I'll leave him to introduce himself to you all later. Uh, Bijan Klass, um, he's this, um, the CEO of the EMEA region for Proto Labs. Uh, we've got Eleonora Gatti, uh, our Innovation Portfolio Manager at WASH and Climate Change for UNICEF. A real privilege, uh, Eleonora, that you're here with us today. Um, Claire Larkspur, uh, the Head of Product Management at LV, welcome. Uh, Simon Wells, our uh, VP of Engineering at Shark Ninja. I always love saying Shark Ninja. Uh, and Mike Bray, uh, our Vice President of Design Spark here at RS Components. So welcome to you all. So today we're looking for three winners. And as I said, you're all winners, but there has to be real winners. So there's going to be three. And the prizes are a thousand pounds in RS parts or a cash equivalent to support prototype development. Also access to a business mentor. And I think we all understand the importance of mentoring and helping you as young as our next generation um, who are ultimately going to be doing and leading the way for the future that we help you on your journey. And then finally, a session with um, our, um, our guest today, um, Navjot uh, around the washing machine project, um, and you'll get some time with him. So hugely grateful. Um, thank you, Yoandi, for joining us and hosting us today. Um, we're always inspired by the way that you talk and the way that you are so passionate yourself about these causes. And you're going to be providing a, a keynote a little bit later titled Sustainability and Innovation for Our World. So we're very excited to hear more there. Good luck to all six finalists who join us from the UK, Singapore, and South Africa. So without further ado, Yoandi, take us away. Great, thank you very, Mike, very much, Mike. Um, gosh, I'm very excited. Um, and, and I hope um, everybody who is uh, pitching today is as well, as well as our listeners. So if you're listening to us on and watching us on LinkedIn, Facebook, um, wherever, um, I'm saying a big, massive hello. Um, let us know, let us know, um, you know, what you think, um, obviously after the event. Um, and as always, we would love, love, love to get some engagement with you. Great. Um, now, this is how it's going to work, right? Ev everybody, so each finalist has a 10 minute slot. And what we've done is to split that 10 minutes into two. So you've got five minutes to pitch. Um, and then uh, you'll take questions from the judges um, in the second half of your 10 minute slot. So um, the way it's going to work, we want to hear those punchy, um, interesting, uh, compelling words in the first five minutes. And, and then you'd uh, get questions from the judges um, in the five minutes after. Right, so judges, are you ready? If you can just wave to let me know that we are ready. Excellent, fantastic, brilliant. Okay. Our judges are ready. Um, and first up, we've got Team Century, right? From Singapore, and they've taken up the product challenge. 
welcome Team Century. Thank you. Thank you, Yawande. Can we just share screen? All right, so good day, everyone. It is our great pleasure to be here today amongst a global audience to share about our team's proposed uh, improvement to the existing DVR1 washing machine. So my name is Hong Wei, and with my teammate Wen Hao, we represent Team Century, and together we actually develop interest in product design with 3D computer-aided drawings, uh, rapid prototyping with 3D printing, and manufacturing during our time at National University of Singapore. Now let us ponder on a question. It is a norm that people pedal bicycles with their feet, but have you ever wondered why are hands never used? So actually, uh, we did some research and the answer actually lies in the set of muscles. As we stand and walk every day, our legs support the weight of our body. So naturally, it has the most set of muscles in our body and having more muscles means that it is more tolerant to prolonged actions, which is the basis of our washing machine product. So presently, the VL1 washing machine is powered by a crankshaft operated by hand. Our improvement seeks to utilize leg muscles instead to rotate the washing barrel through the use of a bent pole. We have put in great considerations for our potential users and hence this improvement encompasses the spirit of simplicity, time efficiency and downwards compatibility with the existing DVR washing machines on the field. So how does our concept work? We think that this long handle design can be further improved as powering this washing machine by hand for 20 minutes is too tiring for the user, especially when our target users are actually women from refugee camps. So you can either pair with a friends to take turns doing the total laundry or lengthen your laundry intervals. Meaning to say that instead of washing your clothes every week, you can now afford to wash your clothes every two weeks for the same duration of 20 minutes spent on washing the clothes using the original DVR machine. So lastly, the use of stronger leg muscles means that you'll be less tired after doing laundry. So it gives you a lot more time and energy to do things that you truly need to do. So for example, girls can be spending time on studying or can be spent time on you doing other household chores. So now let us explain the achievements that our product has made. So uh, we have engineered our product with simplicity as one of our core focus. So as you can see on this slide, simplicity is thought through at each stage of implementation. The first stage will be sourcing. The image above is actually an actual representation of a world map of where bamboos can be easily found. So the five can be found in five continents situated near the equator. So bamboo can be accessible to all refugee camps. So second stage will be the manufacturability, which is simple as well as users can refer to YouTube videos to understand how bamboo can bend under heat and still remain sturdy. So this will help them make their own poles. Third stage would be the transportation, which is also relatively simple as bamboo can be bundled together and stays lightweight. So for better transportability, the DVR1 parts can also be redesigned to be able to fit within the barrel so that there are no loose parts. For the fourth stage, we are able to tightly pack the circular bamboos and the barrels into a shipping container to lower shipping costs by using the concept of desolations. And lastly, to use and maintain is very intuitive to the users due to the simple design created by the washing machine project team. So our additional implementation is actually much simpler. Just one bent pole and our users can actually cut down their laundry durations by 75% as compared to traditional hand washing methods. I will now pass the time on to my teammate Wen Hao, who will talk more about this time saving and the compatibility with existing DVR washing machines on the field. Wen Hao, please. Thank you, Hongwei. So how does our design save time? Well, there's two barrels, so we are thinking of having two people to collaborate and work together to do their laundries. The connected poles ensures that uh, the motions of both barrels synchronize with each other, and therefore we are able to harvest the momentum of the clothes and water dropping from the highest points or in one barrel to power the other. Even though the load that the users will be powering is small, but the usage of their stronger leg muscle combined with momentum harvesting will help the users to feel easier while using the machine. Also, having two people means that each of them will only have to spend 10 minutes working on the machine and hence, we are not compromising on the wash quality as the machine will still run for 20 minutes per wash cycle. This ensures the third sustainable development goal, 
good health and well-being is maintained. In essence, if the original DVR prototype claims to half the washing time from, 20, from 40 minutes to 20 minutes compared to the manual washing methods, our design will be able to further half that user's time spent on the laundry to about 10 minutes. It's a 75% reduction to the time spent doing laundry. This time save can, be, can allow the users to work on other things that can improve their lives, such as taking care of their children or carrying out productive tasks such as a job or uh, education. This helps to achieve the fifth uh, sustainable development goal of gender equality. The collaborative nature also enables the users to make friends, with, which we felt is something important in the usage. So in a usage context of a refugee camp, away from refugees' own countries and on a foreign land. Our simplistic design does not only mean that it is easy to manufacture and repair, but it is also downward compatible with the existing DVR prototypes. All we need to do to the current prototype is to drill four holes to the rims and it is done. Our design does not need to make big modifications to the base, does not have complex moving parts, and it does not add a lot of materials to the current prototype. The collaborative nature of our design does not limit our use of our use case because of the downward compatibility. In the event that there, are, there isn't a partner to work together to, uh, to pedal the machine, users will still be able to install the handles uh, from the old design easily and power with hands and spread the load evenly or spread the load evenly to both barrels. The downward compatibility of our design achieved the 12 sustainable goal of responsible consumption and production as we are using Sorry, as we are reusing the old prototypes and making sure our new design does not render the old one obsolete. So to summarize, our design is simple and intuitive to implement along every stage of the product life cycle. It is time efficient to save as much as 75% of laundry times compared to hand washing. Easy to implement and sustainable with a downward compatibility. And this is what Team Sentry presents to you. Our design of the DVR manual washing machine. I understand that the time we have to pitch our idea is short, so now we are opening the floor to any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much to Team Century. Super, thank you for, um, for, for, for that pitch. Great, so I'm going to um, come back to our judges now. Um, judges, have you got any questions? Actually, what, what what you can please do is please if you stop sharing and, and then we can uh, see the judges there we go excellent great right so your first question is from Bjorn. i would like to have one yeah i actually team century I, I do love the simplicity i have to say that that this basically very very straightforward in in the design I also like the downwards compatibility and also that there are no, no tools needed. This is what I understand. I was wondering throughout the presentation though, well, how do you go about end of life and maybe also end to end of this design? I think the, um, the answer lies already in, in the presentation you gave, but I would like to hear from you. How do you go about that end of life and end to end? Well, sir, can you define end to end? So sorry. Take, take end of life. What do we do at the end of life with your in invention? Okay, so uh, the end of life of our invention, is, as you know, it is actually made of wood and also UN approved barrel as well as the bamboo pole. So it is actually biodegradable materials which you can actually incinerate and also reuse the ashes from the incineration to landfills. That means you can reclaim land using these ashes. So this is probably our consideration for end life. Mm -hmm. As for the barrel wise, we can always use it for storage or any other uh, implementation that we uses uh, PVC plastics. Thank Great. you. Fantastic. Um, Nav has got a question. Hey guys, um, really, really good pitch. Love the, uh, love the idea. Um, have you considered maintainability? So something breaks, how would you, uh, how would you fix it? Yeah, um, I think uh, the, the current design is uh, we try to simplify it such that it's intuitive to maintain uh, without the need for a technician. So um, maybe the refugees, uh, the users can can um, repair themselves if, if needed. Um, if there's like a bolt or screw that comes loose, then definitely they have to uh, call for a technician. But I think in general, the design is simple enough uh, without a need for a very complex um, maintenance schedule even. Yeah. Great, lovely, thanks for that. 
Um, Mike has got a question and then Claire, thank you. Uh, uh, great presentation, guys. Um, congratulations. Um, in terms of the install time, how long do you estimate it would take to uh, configure the Divius in the way that you've proposed? Because we only need to do, drill in four holes at the ring, so probably that will take about 10 minutes to drill, if it's not too long. So because the material is wood, so naturally it's actually very easy to go through to put a hole in the rim. So installation wise, we just need to slot in the bamboo pole and also to bend it will probably take another 10 minutes. So I would say to configure one existing DVR unit would take about 20 to 30 minutes, which I think is quite fast since it's 30 minutes for prolonged use like down three years. The product life is about three years. Uh, I just add that um, if we want to do from scratch, right, it actually depends on uh, how we want to manufacture the wooden planks. So, for example, if you are using like laser cutting, um, it depending on the machine size as well, it can take very um, little time because we just have to pre-program it and put in a, a pieces of wood for them to cut. But if you're doing manual sawing, uh, sawing of the wood planks from scratch, then it might take a bit longer, which I think it still should take about half a day at most, which we think is pretty fast. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Claire, thank you very much. I was just wondering, so you have changed how the user interacts with the product. Um, so I'm interested just whether you've given any thought to kind of how acceptable that new interaction um, with the product is and how that will work for a cross population. So for a variety of um, different users. So actually we made the design consideration that there will be two DVL, one washing machine available at the location. So in that case, we are able to implement our improvisation. So regarding the questions about pop whether populations are able to accept this uh, implementation would be that it's actually much simpler than the original idea where you have to use a hand crankshaft and do it vertically. So by using this, we actually just need a bench and the user can sit down and put their legs on the bamboo pole to pedal like how you pedal a bicycle. So it's more like a low race position like those uh, Paralympics uh, bicycles. So it's actually more comfortable and it protects your back. So you don't have to sit very straight. So I, we think that uh, users will love this idea. Yeah, thank you for all the questions. Great, excellent. And that was perfect timing as it is five minutes on the dot. So well done to you, Team Century. Um, thank you very much for your pitch and for answering the judges' questions as well. Um, now we've got our next team up. Um, we've got Navpreet Singh and Callum Gambril, um, and they've taken up the product challenge. There we go. Hello, nice to see you. So same, same as our, 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 our first team, you've got five minutes um, to pitch and five minutes of questions. The floor is yours. I'm sharing it now. Hello everyone. This is Orbit and we are Aura. Uh, I'm Nath Preeting. I'm a recent product design engineering graduate from Middlesex University. Um, and I am interested and done projects on strategic design, designing for behavior change, sustainable design. And I'm also interested in the circular economy, done economics and user-centered design. Uh, hi, I'm Callum. I'm a recent graduate from Ravensbourne University of London. Um, I've done some work in accessible and inclusive design after graduating a small internship and then went on to film for a TV show, design TV show in front of camera for Sky Arts, um, which is where I met now. Um, we worked quite well together on that. Uh, so we just decided that we continue with, with our kind of process as we have kind of similar design philosophies. So our aims for this brief was to improve the lives of those using the washing machine, uh, reduce pain when in use, encourage better posture and improve accessibility. So once we were introduced to our mentors from uh, the Shop. Shop Ninja, um, we thought about changing the design a bit, changing the orientation of the drum. Um, 
to improve like, the process of loading and unloading clothes. Uh, but then the problems that arise with this was how would we agitate clothes um, and then how would we prevent the water from being at the bottom? And also the seat and height restrictions, would elderly people be able to jump onto the seat? Um, and then also maybe changing the mechanism and having the clothes go down. But overall, we realised that this wasn't really the way that we wanted to go. And we'll revert back to our initial idea. Um, yeah, so with the initial idea, we kind of we want to focus on the accessibility and inclusiveness of the product. Um, so turning it into kind of a seat um, that you can kind of mount and sit on, um, yeah, make it easier for the elderly, for example, um, to use the product. Um, we also kind of want it to be very recognisable. So we used a sort of similar um, design functionality to that of a paddle boat or a bicycle. Um, so the user would kind of know and understand um, pretty easily how to use it. Um, and then we also looked at other ways we could improve um, the user's kind of life in the refugee camp. So we included the um, design of kind of a, a, a ringer into it. Um, so it could help the user um, to dry their clothes, which could be very helpful in um, colder um, climates um, and yeah, different weather conditions. Um, so yeah, we, being recent graduates, we didn't have access to workshops. So we did a lot of kind of sketching and kind of rough and dirty prototyping. Um, and yeah, from our research, we kind of also very sensitive to kind of the region and the kind of cultural traditions of um, how people would use these products. Um, so from our research, we found that um, a lot of the women do a lot of the kind of washing. So we wanted to make sure that our product was kind of sensitive and uh, accommodating towards that. Um, so in regards to what they wear, so they would typically wear long dresses, so making sure that the pedals weren't too far apart and um, it, their dresses wouldn't restrict the movement of moving those pedals. Um, um, and even then we, we still want to kind of encourage the men as well to use the product. Um, so yeah, making the mechanism kind of simple um, and like a bicycle really yeah. kind of um, allow, allow the, the user to to know how to use the product. Okay. So we use like standardised components that are easily accessible, so it will encourage local repair. Um, and also, um, like it's the visual language just communicates with the user, this is how you use it. So having the pedals, it just, I guess, communicates that really well. Um, also, it has multiple points of contact on the floor for rough terrain, like in refugee camps. Um, in regards, to the product itself so it's iteration from the Divya washing machine so because you've already thought about the cost and the ease of manufacture um, it's quite simple so the cost is slightly higher than the initial Divya washing machine but this is justified um sorry yeah this is justified because of the seat and um the additional ringing function yeah the app we think that added value that it brings um, kind of justifies the small and price increase. Um, so yeah, so from the user journey, um, it's pretty similar to use in terms of the original product. And um, when the user would load their clothes into this horizontal drum, um, and then they um, kind of yeah mount the product and pedal it and use their leg muscles, which is um, stronger before um, until their clothes are washed. Um, and the ringer and pedal component uh, can be pulled apart from the kind of main um, drum products with kind of two components. Um, so once the clothes are washed, the user can then uh, remove the ringer component and also remove one of the pedals into a kind of ergonomic handle. Um, and from there, the user can then use the ringer to, 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 to uh, ring their clothes um, so it dries more quickly, um, which, yeah, again, just kind of adds more to that um, value and um, yeah. accessibility. The ringer also um, acts as a so we've just come to five minutes, so just a uh, round up. Of... <laughs> so overall, this is a really compact product. Um, so the ringer also acts as that cast of wheels too, um, hence reducing the need for two of them. Um, again, additional costs are justified. It's easy to use, therefore will save time, and it encourages the ease of local repair due to standardised components. Yeah, so that's all it. And if you have any questions, uh, please. <laughs> Great, thank you so much for that. Very, very interesting. So um, if we just go back to the judges and I can see hands going up. Um, right, uh, if you stop sharing, yeah, that's 
Perfect. Okay, right. So I, I'll start with Eleanor, please. Eleanor, please. Thank you. So we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Thank you. It was my speaker. So we're saying thank you so much for the pitch. That was uh, was great, uh, much appreciated. So I'm, I'm just wondering, where would you um, manufacture the new components uh, for the chair? Would they be manufactured locally or um, in the region or or what, what is your thought process behind the new components? That they okay, so, so the structure is that flat packable. Um, the, the structure is also made from plywood. So it can be CNC cut or laser cut. Um, this can be done like wherever and then uh, could be transported to the desired location um, in regards to like the ringers and the drum that's uh, outsourced and it also um, respects the current supply chain and contacts that the divya washing machine has at the moment um yeah in terms of being flat backable um i yeah we kind of wanted a lot of the components to be put also inside the drum itself um, so that just makes it easier for transport um, and then on location um, to be assembled um, it be, could be kind of similar to like ikea furniture where there'd be kind of numbers be etched into each piece so the user kind of knows um, how to easily fit pieces together um, to make a final product um, and also being in two kind of components with the drum and seek and then the ringer and pedals um, they could kind of easily make those two and then bring them together to, to have the final product so it'll be assembled on the side. Super, thank you very much. And um, Bjorn has got a question as well. Yeah, so great pitch. And uh, what I like about that, I have to say, is that you have two functions. You got a ringer and you got the washer combined, which I, which was intriguing to me. However, that also gave me right away the question around, it's more sophisticated and therefore you might have more maintenance and also more, let's say, assembly work to be done. Did you think about that, how you will safeguard that this is done properly, assembly, then also maintenance if you, if you have more functions? Um, yeah, so we would have a guide um, that would have um, images and ways to assemble the product itself. Um, it, where it's flat packable as well, it's easily taken apart. So even the rollers, they could be used for other purposes like the food. Um, like for rolling you know, dough and stuff. Um, mm. But yeah. Um, yeah, also in terms of um, yeah, the, the assembly um, and it being more complicated, it is more co complex um, and more complicated. Um, but all of the kind of materials being like the plywood and the drum, um, and again, the chain and I guess the more complex things um, are kind of more are sort of easily sourced for the chain with the. Um, similar to a bike chain and that 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 mechanism is almost identical um yeah so the materials should be e easy, easily sourced in the area um, and then the stuff that needs to be ordered like the cnc um it's it, you know cnc uh, the plywood is in abundance so um it would be kind of easy to transport and provide. yeah also as um kind of mentioned um in regards to putting the product together, maybe numbers or um, a diagram would be etched into it to help the user be able to visually understand how it would be put together too. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. And now. Thank you. And uh, thank you guys for the excellent pitch. Really loved the, the detail and the visuals. I had a, a uh, slightly uh, difficult question, which is, um, how would you consider people with disability uh, to use your machine? Or has there been any consideration? Um, in terms of what disability, I mean, um, like, in, like for our design being more accessible in terms of seated, um, is sort of targeted towards the elderly and you know, mm. those that kind of have trouble with kind of standing for a long time or people with kind of bad posture as well um so in regards to that i think the design kind of fulfills that area um but in terms of other disabilities um like so with the pedal you can take it out and then use the clothes ringer to turn potentially it could be times one too if you were to keep the the ringer 
connected to the drum itself. So I guess it has multiple ways to be used. But yeah. Yeah, thank you. That, that, that's kind of what I was alluding to. So thanks. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much for your excellent pitch and for answering those questions super well as well. Thank you. One more okay. question in the chat. Oh, one more question in the chat. We run out of time, unfortunately. Um, but there we go. Uh, in regards to a ring, uh, it, where it's detachable, so it's a, it's a self-standing piece, it could be taken apart and then turned. Um, and then the user could still sit on the on the seat and pedal, and maybe someone else could bring the clothes as well. Okay. All right. So Claire got an answer to that question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, let's go to the, to the to the next team. And we are going back to Singapore. And um, we've got um, Team Neolithic. Okay. And there we go. Are we on? Excellent. The floor is yours. Um, hello, uh, can I just check, can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, hello everyone. So we are Team Neolithic from NTU. And so here's our story of new, of how we decided to improvise DVR further. So we get our inspiration from a commercial washing machine, which initially started off with able to wash, and after that, it's able to wash and spin dry. And recently, we also know that washing machines have even a two-in-one function. It can wash the clothes and even dry them after that. So our intention for the VR to develop it further is such that it can now reach the stage where it can spin dry. And then we also thought of adapting it to become more efficient with the use of multi-gears that we see in the bicycles, but it can better between low and high gear. We wanted to add these additional features to our washing machines such that uh, when users are between like adults and children or between when they're washing on a full load or a half load, they can adjust it efficiently to make sure that it maximizes their strength when they step it. So now I'll pass on the time to my teammate Megan who will share with you more about how easy it is to use the washing machine. To operate Neo, it only takes five simple steps. First, remove the top lids of the drum and the netting, insert the clothing, soap, and fill it with water up to the halfway mark. Next, you will replace the lids and start operating the foot pedal. We decided on this foot pedal so that users could adopt a better posture and even engage in their other chores or hobbies, such as knitting or washing clothes, as using it is just that simple. We chose a step pedal rather than a bicycle pedal to further increase these ease of usage and because some regions actually discourage women from cycling due to their cultural beliefs. This process of rotating the drum will be repeated twice more, once with just water to rinse the clothes and once for spin drying, making Neo multi-purpose and yet straightforward to use. Here's an illustration of the wash cycle. Spin drying is the last step of the washing process and it's done by draining the water out of the hole at the bottom of the drum and then leaving the hole open while continuing to work the pedal to get rid of the excess water. Now, moving on to the adjustable gear option. According to the Washing Machine Project Iraq Report 2019, users were rotating the drum past the most effective revolutions per minute, leading to unproductive washing processes. Hence, we will implement an education phase and adopt the gear changing mechanism for mountain bikes to regulate the RPM so that the Neo washing machine can reach its full potential. For example, children who are not as strong can use the lowest gear, while adults who are stronger can choose a higher gear to slow down their pedaling. To use this gear, all users will have to do is to turn the adjustable rod towards the left to adjust from low to high gear, and vice versa. I will now share more about the benefits of our new washing machine. Neo is a two-in-one washer-dryer. With the clothes contained in the inner cylinder as shown, new users can open the external lid and drain the water and then proceed to spin dry the clothes such that it only needs to be hung under the sun for a shorter duration. This makes the whole clothes washing process a lot less weather dependent. Next, inspired by how washboards work, we designed the inner netting such that it has a jagged surface. This means that our users will be familiar with how Neo works since they are familiar with washboards and this resembling feature can encourage a higher adoption rate. Additionally, the uneven inner surface means that 
it creates more friction between the clothes and the netting, resulting in a more thorough and cleaner wash. Neil also uses a foot pedal, which means that the users will engage their thigh muscles, which are inherently stronger than their air muscles. This makes the whole process of spinning the drum a lot less exhausting. Additionally, we have a free will inside the cock set, and this limits the spin to one direction, such that it conserves momentum, so that less energy is needed. Last but not least, Neo is also environmentally friendly. When the parts require repair or replacement due to wear and tear, the wire fence can be easily whiffed into the inner metal netting, and recycled bicycle gears can be used to replace the cock set. Recycled wood can also be used to make the pedal. So apart from being a green product, all these parts are easily accessible in most places, including where our target users are. And this means that they can handle the simple repair works by themselves, and Neo can serve as a long-term washing solution. In summary, Neo has four great benefits that it brings. Firstly, we have added a new dry stain feature that is not present in the DBL washing machine. Secondly, it's more culturally relevant, and this encourages the adoption of Neo. Thirdly, Neo is efficient with the use of the inner netting that increases the friction between the clothes and the water and also the netting. At the same time, this means that it means less time needed for the wash. Lastly, Neo is sustainable. The use of inner netting means that users can choose to adopt other ways such as chicken fans to re reduce the inner netting to make it more sustainable practice and allows local to use even uh, different ways to make the wire. This means that there's more cultural relevance. So we have come to the end of our presentation and we are open to the floor for any questions. Brilliant, fantastic. Thank you very much for your pitch. Um, we're going to go to the judges now. Um, if you just do me a favor and stop sharing um, and, and then we can see the, uh, the, the judges easily. Right, okay. Um, judges, have we got any, any questions? Uh, Mike has got a question. I, it's great presentation, so thank you for that. Um, one of the points I asked one of the other teams is around installation. So what's your estimate on install time and also the level of maintenance that will be required for this? Okay, so uh, thank you for the question. So regarding installation time, um, it will not take more than uh, 20 minutes additional in terms of installing on top of the current debug time. So after they install the normal device washing machine, what they need to do is to install the gear and the pedal. So it's an add-on to the machine and does not require much uh, maintenance because we believe that uh, the use of the bicycle gear is similar to the wear and tear cycle. So we know that bicycle, we use multiple gears and we actually don't change the gears very often. So we believe that with this, we can estimate that the lifespan of the bicycle gear is actually rather high. Thank you. And just, just to follow up on the maintenance side, so are you expecting this gearing involved, which obviously has adds complexity into maintenance? Um, you've simplified that within your design. Have you got considerations about how much maintenance you would expect a user to need to perform? So you do mean like maintenance of the gear as in as compared yeah. to without the gear, how is the increase of maintenance? The on the gearing itself. We don't expect it to be maintained very often, considering that gears are uh, it's made of metal. Yeah, and although it's made from recycled bicycles, the gear actually functioning well, just that the bicycles have other parts that are wear and tear. So the gears are still in good condition. And provided that uh, we can actually teach the locals how to, let's say, the use of oil to reduce friction, to make sure that the gears are actually in good condition when they actually use it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Simon has got a question. Oh, yeah, just I was just quickly trying to understand from a technical point of view, how do you get the mesh inside the barrel? Did you did you get so, that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Uh, yes. Okay. So it will be a cylindrical inner netting, and then we'll use a nut and a bowl to attach it together with the outer barrel such that it's it's, uh, it's fixed onto the outer bearing, but it can be easily removed by simply removing the washer and the bolt. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Great. Um, uh, Bjorn has got a question. Uh, so we can't hear you. We've lost your audio. Can you hear me now? 
Yes, loud and clear. I'm, I'm fiddling with my system here. I'm sorry for that. But a follow up question to Simon's question, actually. A good pitch, as far as I could hear it. I'm sorry, I got disconnected. But if you have the mesh in there, how do you keep the distance to the barrel? Uh, because I was wondering if you, if you t start rotating, you get basically rotation power and you pick up the moisture on the other side. Did you give it a thought? Okay, so thank you for that. Um, I'm just wondering, so do you mean like when the machine is spinning, then um, the inner net might move? Is that what you meant? Yes, it exactly. goes closer to, to the barrel. Um, actually, the inner netting itself, um, we are thinking of having it such that it is fixed to, let's say, this, this is the board, and then this is the outer, outer drum, right? It will be fixed to this. So even if it's moving, right, we have an additional outer board that's there. So even if it moves, it can still be able to rotate and it will not move out because there's an outer board outside as seen in our uh, article as you can refer to. We have actually a two board. So one board is to secure the inner netting to the uh, board itself and the other one is the nuts where it's outside to prevent it from moving out when you're trying to rotate it. Great, and Nava's got a question. Thank you guys, really great presentation. Love the passion and energy. Um, my question was uh, around the, the, the Gs that are created when you're uh, using your spin cycle. So, you know, when you, you're gearing up uh, your washing machine, it's gonna, it's gonna move about. Um, is there any consideration in kind of dampening that, stabilizing that? What are your thoughts in, in the current design for this consideration? Um, we haven't really thought of any stabilization system, but then the idea is that because we are trying to fix the inner netting to the, we are attaching it to the outer barrel with two points. So with the two points stuck, it actually wouldn't, we are not expecting it to actually move out of place. Yeah, because it will be stuck at the center. Similar, it's, it's simply like how we are just adding another container and screwing in two bolts at the at the end of each flat surface such that, yeah, it doesn't rotate out of what we desire. Uh, just to add on what, to what Singy said, actually the netting will only be containing the clothes, so it won't be as heavy as if it were to actually hold the water as well, which is what the barrel is doing. So that's why we don't expect the netting to actually move further from what we expect it to move. Thank you very much, guys. Great, thank you very much um, for your pitch and for your questions, judges, uh, and for your responses uh, to Neolithic. Um, we are then going to uh, go over to South Africa from Singapore. I, I love this, this is wonderful. We've covered like <laughs> how many countries already, <laughs> which is brilliant, absolutely super. So we're gonna come to Kai um, in South Africa and he's taking up uh, the product challenge. Hi everyone. Hi there. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. I'll share my screen. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Kai Goodall. I'm currently doing my master's in electrical engineering at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. Today I'll be presenting my pedal and spin washing machine innovation. It is designed to improve the hygiene and daily living conditions of low income and displaced persons around the world. These people's daily living conditions can be dramatically improved by nonprofit organizations coming to their aid. The primary focus of these organizations is to assist with these people's basic needs, such as food, shelter, clothing, and hygiene. Working in conjunction with the washing machine project and using their existing successful infrastructure of their current hand-cranked Debian washing machine, I look forward to the opportunity to further improve the quality of these people's lives through my improved washing machine design. And now I'd like to present my pedal and spin washing machine innovation. It is a foot cranked washing machine based on the combination of a treadle and a pedal system. This direct drive pedal system seen in these images allows the user to pump the foot pedals in an alternating fashion to easily rotate the drum by connected rods and a specialized cage pivot support system on either side of the drum. Furthermore, the drum rotates on a cradle support unit with frictionless cast wheels, similar to the current hand crank Divya washing machine. Here's a video tour of the pedal and spin washing machine showing its different working parts. Its key features include foot straps for added grip and an easily removable cage setup on either side of the drum for ease of drum access and transportation. Once the drum is removed, the lid and seal can quickly be opened to fill the drum with washing, water, and detergent. 
And now a demonstration of a variety of different users will be shown, <laughs> starting with my 12-year-old brother and ending with my 85-year-old grandmother. As you can see, people of all ages and sizes can all comfortably use the washing machine with ease without any adjustments needed. Here's the story of how I got to my final design. We started with improving the usability, sustainability, and the long-term adoption of the current Devia washing machine, which can be seen on the left with its hand crank mechanism, followed by my improved pill and spin washing machine on the right. As you can see, my design appears to use very little energy and it's very comfortable to operate while sitting due to the user utilizing a stronger muscle group and having their hands free to multitask as they wish. The current design takes considerably more energy to operate from the standing position with strain on the user's arms and back muscles. Hence my design improves the user posture and the general usability of the current washing machine. The final design was achieved through rapid prototyping. The initial design version one was fabricated without a drum to purely test the trailer drive system, followed by version two that allowed the 25 liter water filled drum to be added to test the power of the trailer drive system. Version one and two were very successful and testing was continued through version three, which allowed for various adjustable design parameters, which included pedal height adjustments, connecting rod length adjustments, adjusting the pivot radius of the drum. Hence this robust engineering testing allowed for the best parameters with the highest rotation efficiency and maximum user cover to be found and implemented in version four, which is the final design. The final design uses the successful drum rotation support cradle unit of the current Divya washing machine for ease of implementation and therefore simply involves the addition of the foot crank drive system compared to the previous hand crank system. The final design has a weight of 19 kilograms without any water or clothes in the drum and 13 kilograms without the drum. The final design has dimensions of 950 by 480 by 330 millimeters without the drum and has a total cost of $87. This cost can be greatly reduced by up to 40% through mass production. The final materials are plastic for the 52 liter drum, wood for the drum rotation system as it is lightweight and easily formable. Steel is used for the trailer drive system as it is strong, readily available and easy to fabricate. The final design has the following advantages over the current Divya washing machine and other bicycle chain pedal based designs, which are seen a lot on the internet, hence making an original and strong design. The treadle movement is rarely feared and easy and exerts minimal load on the user's legs. The seated and relaxed operation allows the upper body to be free for other tasks, less potential joint and back pain due to improved user posture, low cost, low maintenance requirements and easy repairability compared to a chain drive system which has high manufacturing costs, specialized repairs needed, and high probability of the chain snapping over time due to a dusty environment, as well as water exposure causing rusting of the chain. My design can be repaired without any specialized parts or experts needed in basically any workshop in the world. A comfortable pedaling action was achieved by using the cage design to bring in the drum rib pivot points. My rigorous testing showed that keeping the pivot points in the outer circumference of the drum made the leg movement excessive and very uncomfortable for the user. Hence, bringing in the pivot points allowed the forward to backwards movements of the pedals to be comfortably halved. This allowed for a huge improvement in the ergonomics of the final design. Finally, the design is sustainable due to its strong material selection, which increases its lifespan. Thank you. Um, I now welcome any questions that anyone may have. Great. Thank you very much for that pitch. Um, if we uh, just go to the judges now, and I can see, I Oh, Nav, was, was that a, a, a legacy handoff or did you have a question? <laughs> well, but, but I, can, I, can, I can ask the question or get it started. Uh, thank you, Kai. I, I really, really loved this. I loved uh, seeing the, uh, the, the prototype as well, especially with the grandma. That's really nice. <laughs> uh, thank um, you. Um, so my question was rounded by uh the cultural sensitivity of this so pedaling um, um with open legs in some cultural environments any consideration of this uh, going forwards or what are your thoughts about that okay sure thanks for the question so i definitely think that is something to be considered and i think as you can see with um two of the users the mother with her child as well as my mother who's seen just before my grandmother's uh, mm. video they were both wearing um skirts and they were able to because of the angle of approach, basically, of the chair, you, you can actually adjust your chair's position to allow your legs to be more downwards, which can actually prevent any issues 
or cultural issues, like you said. And um, I think that can definitely be explored further though as well. So thank you for that. And just a follow-up question, and I'd sure. love to invite other judges. Um, um, how would you uh, pack this up into uh, transportation? Okay, sure. No, that's a great point. So basically the cage support system, which is seen on either side of the drum, it gets easily released with a wing nut on either side, as well as there's a release pin with the connecting rod that connects onto the pedals. So basically all the parts deassemble. And later on, there will be a consideration of actually having uh, a hinge set up, which will allow the pedal support base to fold in. So basically everything allows to be flat packed into the cradle support unit of the drum for ease of transportation. So I definitely think that is, my modular design basically allows it to be deassembled and reassembled with under less than 10 minutes. Thank you. Thanks, Kai. Excellent. Um, Bjorn had a question as well, or, or maybe sure. one, more than one question. <laughs> no, I was invited by NAV, I need to. So uh, Kai, great presentation, I like it. And I like your energy, honestly. Thank um, you very much. So. Um, I was thinking about the charging and discharging of the drum because you always have this um, this structure in front of it. Um, any considerations of how to expedite that or make it even user more user friendly with your design? Sorry, could you reiterate what you mean by that, please? Yeah, you get you get basically the, the before the lid, you get the the structure the steel structure which you basically have mounted with with screws in there. So you need to take yes. that off in order to so that it's always screwing off and screwing on, up the screwing okay. down. Okay, no, no, sure. So definitely, um, I've actually tested it myself quite a lot, uh, as well as with a whole bunch of different users that had no experience with the machine. So, you know, in my local township where I went when I got that video of the mother with the child, as well as my family members, and basically screwing off that wing nut with um, a wing nut is very simple to use. It basically just spins off. There's no material, no tools needed. And you can basically release it on either side very quickly. And then all just like the current washing machine, you literally just click off the lid and you can add your clothes and water and put it back on. So I can promise you that process takes less than a few minutes to put the washing in and out, as well as for ease of transportation to take the drum off of the cradle support unit. Thank you. Great, excellent, thank you. Um, Eleonora has got a question as well for you. Sure, yes. thanks. Thank you, Kai, that was a great presentation. So I was wondering, if you consider whether some of the components that you're introducing could be uh, manufactured locally? Because sometimes it's hard to ship components from one country to another country and, and so on and so forth. So, and also using the, the kind of manufacturing the components so as a way to empower uh, also local economies. Thanks and over. Awesome. Thank you. No, that's a great point. And I have considered that. And basically, because my new process that are involved in making my washing machine, it goes on with the existing processes, which is woodwork. And woodwork is a skill known all around the world in any country, developing countries or undeveloped countries, as well as my addition process is basically welding and welding, which is needed to you know to make the foot pedals, as well as the specialized cage system is again, a very skill that is very available anywhere in the world. So definitely, I think in the countries that these washing machines will get deployed to, we could set up very basic workshops anywhere in these countries to basically get the local economy involved and you can basically find in any country, you can find woodworkers as well as people that can weld easily. So I definitely think that's a great point. Instead of making it, you know, in the UK and shipping it out, we can make it anywhere basically. As well as if it needs repairing, um, it can get repaired as well in any, in the country of its, where it will be working basically. So if it's in whatever country, basically because of the skills available, it's easy to get repaired and no specialized equipment needed besides welding and basic woodwork. Thank you. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Kai, for that great pitch um, and to our judges for their questions. Um, we are now going to ask Ketki Dave to pitch uh, and five minutes for your pitch and five minutes for questions um, as well. Thank you. Ketki, have we got you on? If you're speaking, we can't hear you. Hi, sorry, um, can you hear me now? Yes, we can, excellent, thank you. Sorry, I'm accessing, you're using two devices, that's why it's a bit, uh, there's a bit of confusion. So uh, I'll just start the presentation. Okay, 
So, hi, I'm Katie. I'd like to just introduce me and I welcome you to my idea for the planet. So, I'm going to begin with a question Do you know what percentage of microplastics in the ocean are traced to laundry washing? It's a massive 35%. That's quite a lot. And this uh, translates to 7 million microfibers in a single wash which is about 100 to 8,000 milligrams, which is quite a lot. Uh, you might know we drink plastics every day. It amounts to four and a half grams of plastic through water every week. What's the solution? So uh, my idea is uh, very simple. You take, you have a filter, you retain the microplastics, collect them, and if possible, biodegrade them. Uh, this is uh, with reference to petes, which have, was discovered in a fungus in Japan. Uh, so what are the user requirements? Uh, portable filter, easily fit to the drain hole, connect using a simple hose pipe, uh, can be adjusted to space requirements, should last 12 months, output high quality water, fully biodegradable and low cost under $20, because the machine itself uh, is $120. Now, uh, I'll just clarify at the onset, the cost of the main filter uh, will be under $20, but there are some processes for which I don't know the cost yet. So the first stage is a 50 mm bamboo tube fitted with a jute film, which can pre-filter the wastewater up to 50 micron. The second stage is a sediment filter, uh, uses depth filtration, uh, cellulose fibers used from cotton, jute, coconut, it can filter up to 10 microns. The third stage is um, it's a kind of uh, layers using hydrogel activated charcoal, and the innermost layer is a nanomembrane made using jute cellulose nano whiskers, non woven uh, and spun using electro spinning. And that can filter up to 0.2 microns, which will make it drinkable because that would filter most of the bacteria and viruses. And chitosin treatment would keep it antibacterial and the activated charcoal treatment should also have some microcidal properties. Uh, what would be nice is if we would know for sure, if we had tested this, we would know the water can be used for drinking. Uh, cartridges can be back flushed so that it can last longer uh, because the cartridges would, depending on the use, they might need to be changed every three months. If there's less use, it would last 12 months. Uh, the main uh, bamboo can be cleaned, disinfected using white vinegar, simple processes. All materials are fully biodegradable and compostable. And uh, after jute bag can be homemade using cotton layers if the use is light. What would be really nice is if the lint from the jute film bag, the back flushed water collected in a jar every three months and cartridge, which is to be replaced every 12 months, if all of this could be, you know, biodegraded using algae, which is uh, genetically engineered and it has petes, which eats up the plastic, it becomes food for the algae and this algae grows and it could be harvested and it could actually be sold. Uh, as fish food or ingredients for cosmetics or even biomass, biofuel. Uh, the, it's, there's a lot of potential there. Uh, prototyping and user testing obviously needs to be done to see how it fits into the workflow. I have thought about it, but uh, that needs to be done. So in summary, it is easy, convenient to use, versatile, because uh, you can remove phase one or three depending on it's heavy use or light use. Simple, flexible connection, low cost under $20 will last 12 months. Materials are locally sourced. Bamboo is available in 52 countries around the world. Jute is available as well easily. Great drinking quality, solves water scarcity to some extent. Uh, flexible storage, 0.2 micron filtration, fully biodegradable and could potentially be a source of livelihood. Thank you. Thank you, Ket Kiefer, for that great pitch, um, tackling a planet challenge. Um, we'll now come to our judges um, and, and take questions. Um, and, and I see oh, we've got Mike and Simon. 
Mike first and then uh, Simon, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Keki. That, that's a very fascinating uh, pitching presentation. Um, what help do you need in terms of getting through prototyping and how long would you anticipate that taking? Right, that's a very good question. So uh, I think there's some, uh, I have researched this, so all the things I've mentioned is based on research, uh, articles published in, uh, in journals, but uh, there is actually processes that will need to be, so local traders or manufacturers, so for example, electro spinning of uh, jute nanocellulose fibers to create non-woven uh, membrane. That is something, uh, what the research says is that the pores will be two and a half times to maximum 10 times the diameter of the nanofibers. So, which is a very good thing. You use nanofibers and you get up to 0.2 micron pores. Uh, so that prototype needs to be done to see the membrane. Uh, the other thing that needs to be checked is antibacterial quality of chitosin, uh, which, uh, which how long lasting it is and whether it feeds into the water. That's the other thing that needs to be checked. Uh, uh, activated carbon, does it need some additives for the microcidal properties? That's the other thing I have on my mind. Um, the cartridge itself is made from fibers which can be sourced from jute, uh, cotton uh, and coconut. So that will depend on the local uh, local traders and local availability, what fibers are available. So that will have to be tied up with the local traders to see uh, how the fibers, yarn, how the yarn is woven and how the cartridge can actually be made. That there will be manufacturing practices locally, it will have to be tied up with that. I think these are the main things. Uh, algae in itself is a great idea. Um, there are things about how the culture can be kept alive in a bottle, if it can be distributed with the machine and if it can actually you know, be kept by the window side. So that will have to, that will have to be tested first for a few months. You take an algae bottle at home and you, you try it yourself, then you try it in different places for the environment and then it can so that is a bit long longer you know it's a bit longer the filtration is the immediate thing that can be done but the reason the algae is important is what we are doing is we are removing microplastic from the water and putting it in the landfill so we're just removing it from water and polluting the soil so the best thing is to 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 biodegrade it fully so it just goes back to its natural component thank you thank you great simon and um and then claire thank you uh, just a real quick question i was just trying to just differentiate are some of the some of the filtration elements uh, effectively consumable so need replacing or and some of them cleanable uh, what's what's sort of the breakdown there uh, i didn't quite follow that bit of it yes yeah, so there's there's three parts there First is uh, the jute film, which is uh, is to remove the sediment. So it can, it is it is easily. Uh, obviously, it will get used very quickly. So just like in our washing machine, every three months uh, in the dryer, we need to clean up the filter every six months. So the jute bag, I'm I'm expecting every three months, it will get filled up with lint and other things. So if 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 need be, people, it depends on the use and on the affordability as well. So you could probably use just, you know, take layers of cotton that is available in your own home and make a kind of a bag and that should work. So that's what I've thought. The second thing is the, the main cartridge. Um, the main cartridge will depend on the use. It could be as little as three months, but I'm hoping that with, with the depth, uh, I've kept it quite long, the filter, and could last potentially up to 12 months. Uh, the bamboo itself will last up to 18 months if it's not treated. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not recommending treatments because they could leach into the water. And so that, it will, that will be a trade-off between the cost of the cartridge. So at the moment, if you look online, 
the polypropylene cartridges are costing some, somewhere between $3 to $8. Um, the cotton cartridges have stainless steel cores, which make them more expensive. Uh, but if you are using a bamboo core, I am kind of, you know, uh, estimating or guesstimating or whatever that the cartridge itself core could be about $10. Uh, so it depends on uh, the technology. If we can tie up with local traders and use local technologies they're using for spinning the yarn and make cartridge out of it, then we should be able to do it in about $10 because the polypropylene one of anywhere between $3 to you know, $8, $19. So. Okay, we're just going to have to go to Claire's question because we've run out of time. So you, you've got 10 seconds to respond to Claire's question. Okay. There's it was just a quick one to build on Simon's point um, about sort of maintenance and use for the user. Have you given any consideration um, to how you can support uh, the user correctly kind of uptaking and maintaining your solution? Yes, so uh, one is the local traders. It would, they have to tie with local traders for the main cartridge. The jute back can be homemade. But there is the, if, if we're going for the third nanomembrane, that is a specialized thing. So we, uh, so now Joth would have to probably supply it every, every year or something. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your excellent pitch, Ketki. Um, we are now going to go to, um, Joe Baker, who has also taken on the Planet Challenge. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, the floor is yours. Thank you for having me. So, yeah, my name is Joe Baker, and I'm a mechanical engineering student from Coventry University, and I'm going to be showing you my design for the low-tech filtration system for microplastics and grey water out of the Divya washing machine. So firstly, I'd like to talk to you about my company name. I chose human nature as I want to change the negative connotations with human nature and show that human nature is about caring for others and acting as a community. So I hope this design shows just that. So to every, every solution, there's a problem. So there's a lack of clean water in many displaced and low-income communities. As you see on the right here, many streams are filled with dirty and contaminated water. And normally the water source is often far away and they have to carry bucket loads of water to like very long distances, causing strain on the back and arms. And there is a major issue about plastic pollution at the moment. When you wash clothes, clothes contain plastics and the microplastics from the clothes will enter the water. And this goes with the wastewater and, and grey water entering the natural environment, which can, which can cause harm to, to sea life, such as microplastics entering the guts of fish and causing harm from within. So here's the solution. It's an external filtration system where the Divya, the Divya washing machine will sit on top. This will allow water to flow through the whole system without the use of any complicated mechanisms such as pumps. And this will, this will also allow effective filtration of microplastics and grey water, filtering all the water effectively. It also separates the large impurities away from the small impurities. This will increase the life's lifetime of the, si of the system. And during the design process, the height was considered and it was reduced down to about waist height. This will reduce the strain and stresses when carrying the Divya washing machine to be placed on top of the system. It can also be left on top for operation and filling water in and exchanging the clothes. The design was meant to be kept as simple as possible and therefore easy to repair and easy to maintain. There's no use of tools for this. As you can see here, the platform is constructed using nylon rope. So the features and benefits. So firstly, the platform is made out of bamboo. This is a great material that is natural, durable, and can last a long time and it's very strong. It can be locally sourced, such as in the continents of Africa and Asia, is also a very a renewable material. So the containers are made out of medium density polyethylene plastic containers. These are durable, cheap, and can be easily sourced. 
and they're also waterproof and greaseproof. So the sand and gravel filtration is used for the large impurities, such as removing the dirt, lint, hair, and grease from the water coming out of the washing machine. Below that is a muslin cloth, which will act as a pre-filter for the, the carbon block below. This will prevent sand from falling through and large impurities. So as we can see here, it's a close up of how the co coconut carbon block filter works. So the water will flow through the filter and the coconut carbon will block impurities that are larger than 0 0.5 microns, which is the majority of microplastics that we, that we know of. And as you can see, the water will flow down into a space below, which can be for a bucket or, con or a container or whatever is available. So the cost, it costs around $50 to make. And as you can see here, it's tried to be kept as minimalistic as possible with a low number of parts and a low number of quantity to the parts. So in summary, the design is effective filtration of gray water and microplastics. The majority of the materials are locally sourced or sustainable renewable materials. And the design is accessible, therefore easy to maintain and repair and is for everyone. So thank you for listening and I'm happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you very much, Joe. Um, we will come to our judges now and, and just uh, go through. Oh yes, um, Bjorn has got a question. Yeah, interesting, very interesting idea, Joe. And I Thank like you. your pitch there. Um, I was wondering when when I read about that, the carbon um, filter and the carbon block is basically taking up all the microplastics. Where does it go afterwards? How do we dispose out of that? Um, and um, how long will the will the yeah, will will this this filter stand? How many liters, years, or decades, whatever it is? I'm hoping the filter will last about twelve months, especially when mm -hmm. separating the large impurities. Mm -hmm. such as dirt and lint, so um, you don't need to replace it as, um, as quickly. And mm -hmm. the carbon block filter is made out of coconut, so it should biodegrade by itself. And then this will leave the microplastics by itself, um, which you can collect afterwards, and then you can dispose of it, such as recycling the microplastics by um, packing them together and making new materials out of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Oh, Simon has got a question. Um, have you given some thought to how you might clean the gravel and sand? Because that strikes me as being pretty difficult, uh, yeah. a difficult material to deal with. So it can be washed or it can be collected from, um, and it could be after a while where the large impurities collect up. You can also replace it. And I thought it can be replaced locally as many people are close to rivers where they can collect the gravel and the sand. So that should be fine. Great answer, thanks. Great, Claire. I was just wondering if you could sort of talk through your considerations of the impact of that height raise. Yes, yeah. so I have thought about it. I tried to reduce the height as much as possible and it reaches about two feet, which is about waist height for the majority of people. So it it would be you still have to lift the washing machine but i'm hoping you can still operate when leaving it on top and it won't impact the operation too much i can hopefully the design is optimized enough to withstand the the pressures of um using the hand crank or another method um so i'm hoping it won't have too much of an impact great thank you have we got any um more questions, judges. Oh, yeah, there's a follow up, follow up um, question, yeah. And just wondering if you could talk through uh, sort of the installation side of things. Is that for the user or is that, um, yeah, and, and how you might support that? So, yeah, I was thinking um, the users can do it themselves, but I would recommend, well, I'm sure, I'm sure they can, um, do it themselves with with ease because bamboo construction is very common but if if not i was thinking you could have workshops where you can show people how to construct it and you can also have um like picture focused instruction manuals for those who cannot read instructions and make it very clear and it should be easy to to construct as 
such as with the bamboo frame, you just use rope, which would like construct it together with no use of tools or any skills, um, technical skills needed. And um, the containers are stackable, so you can stack them on top of each other. And the carbon block filter should fit in using a transition fit into the container. So you don't need to screw anything in. And then the sand and gravel can be just poured in. Great, excellent. Good. Wow, okay, brilliant, fantastic. Thank you very much, Joe. No more questions from the judges. Yeah. Thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> um, Thank you. I, and, 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 and Joe was our, our, our last um, finalist to pitch. Um, really, really inspiring to hear um, you know, everybody and, and, and all the teams who have pitched today. Um, it, it really is you know, um, humbling and, and mind blowing at the same time that you guys have gone to such an extent to ensure that you're thinking through ideas that are applicable to solving um, world problems. And we're slightly behind um, you know, on, on, on schedule, but we are going to say bye for now to our judges um, because they are going to go into a separate room um, and, and think about everything they've heard. And I am sure it's going to be a very, very difficult decision for them to make because the quality of pitches today has been absolutely super. Um, we have also included um, the links to all the um, uh, solutions pitched today in the chat. So if you want to go check them out, please go check them out. And um, we would love to get some engagement. And I can see, you know, people have been commenting and, and, and you know, expressing how impressed um, they are with some of the ideas that have come through. Um, so our judges, um, there's a link in the chat for the separate room that you're going to go to. So bye for now. <laughs> we will see you shortly. Um, and you guys are stuck with me for hopefully a 10, 15 minutes a keynote. Great. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to really just follow on from the incredible, you know, absolutely super um, pitches that I've heard today. Um, and the fact that, you know, as I said, you guys are thinking through from products to, um, you know, to the people that you are designing the products for, and also thinking, you know, about the planet, you know, is proof that you are definitely <laughs> on your way to solving um, real life problems. And, and actually, I hope you, I hope you see that in my, in my keynote, um, you know, shortly you'd see things that are very, very, very similar um, to, to the things that you've presented. So in so many ways, you are also ahead of your time. So I'm just gonna share my screen um, and hopefully um, the tech works. Okay, there we go. All right, give me a thumbs up somebody if you can see my screen okay. Great, can we see my screen okay? All right, let me just check. Can somebody give me a thumbs up if they can see my screen okay? Kai, can you see my screen okay or? Yes, I can. It's oh, perfect. good. Okay, Thank you. fantastic. All right, it's lovely. <laughs> Brilliant. Great. All right, so I've titled this uh, Sustainability and Innovation for Our World. Um, and it is uh, very topical. Um, it's also what I hope that you know, um, every engineering student stroke, technology student stroke um, innovator is 
thinking of in terms of their solutions. So whether they're coming up with solutions for their countries, um, they are really you know, thinking about how you can uh, ensure that your product is scalable um, across the world. Um, obviously context, a massive, massive part of sustainability as well as innovation. Um, my name is uh, Yewandi Akinola, as you um, already know, and um, I'm an engineer. I've worked on projects all over the world. Um, I've worked um, in the engineering industry, so the built environment strict engineering industry for a number of years. Um, I studied engineering um, at university. I've worked um, with big companies. Um, and small organizations as well on, uh, on purposeful projects. Um, I've had the incredible opportunity of um, telling engineering stories um, in different parts of the world and really to bring to light um, the great work that is happening, the work that needs to happen um, and the role that engineering plays in solving some of our world's biggest um, problems. Um, I grew up in Ibadan, and um, for anybody who knows the West African coast and knows West African countries, Ibadan is in Nigeria. Um, I spent a lot of my growing years between a, a town called Ilefe and Ibadan. And the idea, um, you know, for, um, you know, I guess this talk is pretty much based on my experience growing up and actually how that shaped um, my career in, in, in so many ways. Um, I spent a lot of my teenage years, you know, building models of, of, of what I thought would be much nicer buildings to live in. So this is me at, I don't know, I don't know, 13, 14. I'm admiring something I'd spent the entire night building. Um, I always used to kind of imagine I would build, you know, a, a better living space for my mom and my sister and for family members as well. Um, my mom's an artist, so she always had a stack of paper in the corner of our living room. Um, and, and I would, you know, use the paper and I'd use the printer ink um, from, 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 from the printer um, and, and, and all of her sellotape to create these models. Um, but that was the closest thing I had to this, I guess, world of imagination of what was possible. That inspired me to study engineering design and appropriate technology at the University of Warwick. Um, again, you know, I'd spent a lot of my childhood, um, you know, years trying to work out what the best solutions, you know, in terms of water supply, in terms of power and electricity um, were. Um, and so by the time I was coming to university, I'd spent many hours trying to fetch water from either a well or from a tank where we stored water um, in our compound. And, and so I wanted to be able to apply the engineering to where I was coming from, to be able to say, actually, this is a better way to solve uh, a water supply a problem or solve a power problem. And this course at Warwick had a massive bias towards developing countries. It was all about finding solutions that were appropriate. So you never came up with solutions uh, for Africa, right, based on problems that were more evident in Europe. And that was the whole idea. That was the uh, underlying, um, you know, lesson in all of the tutoring that we uh, received um, as part of the degree program. Um, I used all those ideas um, to then start to work on projects that were obviously, you know, very much aligned to my story. Um, as part of my third year project, I decided to uh, come up with a solution that helped uh, people understand what interventions were best in different communities that had water supply issues. And so the headlines were, how do you design for context? 
How do you design for sustainability? How do you design for upliftment? And these are photos of brilliant, brilliant collaborators on my third year project. Um, I went to Ghana. I based my project on work that was happening in Ghana in a, in a, in a town called Tamale. And I would sit with the community uh, uh, and, and, and the women in the community to understand exactly what their water supply issues were. Um, and just like I heard today, you know, some of the things that came up were, you know, we've got pumps that help with water supply, but we always have a problem when one part breaks. How do we ensure that we're, you know, um, have, we're providing solutions that we can then, you know, help with solving if one part fails, um, you know, if, if we think, you know, that one part has failed, um, we don't know exactly how to troubleshoot. How do we manage coming up with solutions, with the resources, with the intelligence that we have as a community? And that in so many ways really formed the basis for all the work that I do now. Because, you know, I really now understand that whatever type of engineering I'm coming up with, I need to ensure that I'm designing for context and designing uh, for lifestyle as well. Continuity, always a big, massive thing. You know, if something breaks, how can you ensure that you can keep that solution going? Um, and then when I started work um, as a graduate engineer um, in Bristol with an incredible company called Arab, um, the next step of my lesson became you know, how I come up with those initial sketches to be able to communicate the idea, for it to go from initial sketch, you know, that idea in the clouds to actual product. And again, just as you guys have done today and, you know, and, and, and also, um, you know, possibly our, our, our audience watching on LinkedIn and Facebook, how do you go through those different design stages? Um, also, how do you break the rules to design for sustainability? How do you ensure that you are reducing uh, energy consumption as part of, as the inherent part of your design solution? Um, I had the wonderful pleasure of being mentored and tutored by um, a guy called David George. And you can see um, a photo of, of myself and him right in the middle. Um, and, and these are his sketches, literally the first day of uh, of, of me starting with him, he just dumped all these sketches on my desk. And that helped me take the, you know, gritty, you know, engineering and sometimes quite dull engineering to something that was, you know, creative, um, you know, expressive, colorful, um, and, and definitely artsy as well. And you can see the image as well um, on, on, on the right. Um, we were thinking about ways to filter water um, and, and, you know, really capture rainwater um, without all the energy that is sometimes associated with um, capturing rainwater. Um, and that, in so many ways, as you can also see in this image um, on, on the left, you know, that was the start of design progression for me. That was the start of innovation for me. Um, that was the start of, of, of having the courage to really come up with an idea, but then see that idea through using materials that are available to me, using materials that I could just pick up from, you know, local stores next to me, and really understanding that collaboration and working with people, with friends um, in most cases, can be an opportunity to come up with wonderful solutions for our world. Um, simplifying the challenge was definitely something I learned <laughs> um, and understanding that sustainability is innovation, right? There's so much talk about sustainability. You know, everybody is talking sustainability, sustainability, but actually what we are trying to do is to really turn things on their head, to say, actually, that's the way we've done it you know, in the past, but now we are going to be innovative to really rethink those things that we've 
you know, done over the last, you know, 10, 20 years to really work out how we can make it more efficient. Um, and innovation is most efficient when the team is right. So it's been really good to see, you know, so many of our teams today are people really working closely together and representing a wonderful, strong message that innovation can be efficient when the team is right. Um, underlying, um, you know, underlying um, thoughts as well around, you know, total design and ensuring that whatever it is that you're coming up with, you know, you can see how it comes together. You can see how it can be efficient in the manufacturing process. Um, and the pictures that you see here, you know, really range from me working with uh, my friend Anoki Shah in the basement of uh, one of our office buildings. So I went to uni with Anoki Shah. So for everybody who's on, who is working, you know, um, with a, a friend who is also their, you know, their classmate at university, um, you really are in a great position to keep those relationships going, um, to take those ideas that you have taken to look for a platform, you know, whether it's an organization or, you know, it's the likes of, you know, the washing machine project and RS component, to then take the idea to prototype, right? And for it to go from prototype to actual installation. So we worked on a filtration system. We worked on this uh, tank solution. And very quickly, what we did was to remove the cistern, your typical toilet cistern, um, and to really just take water directly from the roof, so rainwater falling on the roof, and take that into, uh, to channel that into these enlarged cisterns and place them uh, on projects. And so you can see the water comes in directly and then it directly flushes the water without using any energy at all. Um, the other exciting parts of it is really delving into um, the design for manufacturer spirit to seeing you know ourselves as designers but also people who are capable of manufacturing um, and I think that's very very exciting because you know um, you know we we need to move away from this idea that you are just a designer and you only design because a designer really has to think through the process of how it's manufactured. Now, a design is only complete when one can imagine and confirm how it is made, manufactured, and maintained. And the principles and sequencing of design solutions are mostly applicable across industries. So you're designing for the components, right? You're designing for the intersection, so how it comes together with other parts, you know, with other component parts. You're designing for interdependency. So where one component part needs to rely on the function of another component part, you are designing for those interdependencies. And these are pictures of me really um, going through that process, you know, um, under the guidance of, of, of my boss and mentor at the time um, to go through the process of how everything came together from a pipe with a slightly bigger diameter to a, to a tube, um, to the casing, to whatever valves uh, we were also um, incorporated into the design. Um, and what is super exciting is what I found out. You take those same design tools from thinking you know, uh, along the lines of sustainability and appropriate technology. You take that design box and you are able to apply it to projects that people might not necessarily see as global sustainable projects, right? So I was able to take that initial understanding of, you know, of, 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 of engineering and sustainable engineering and apply it to projects in Shanghai, apply it to projects in the Middle East. Um, from, you know, water projects on small projects, on, 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 at a small scale uh, for small communities, the thinking applied to super high-rise buildings 
um, and, and, and huge massive teams, you know, working on different projects in a different language, um, halfway across the world. Um, and, and that is the most profound thing that I've gotten from, you know, uh, understanding the importance and the relevance of sustainable thinking. Now, very quickly, because I see we're running out of time, is the design for manufacture and assembly thinking helps you go through, I guess, what are emotions that help you come up with a more complete idea. So it helps you flag issues. It helps you unpack the problem. It helps you as an engineer achieve technical assurance, um, including all the textbook research and the prototyping and testing of solutions. It helps you communicate ideas. And even as you start to work with bigger teams, right, you would understand the importance of ensuring that you are able to express your ideas clearly to people. And I've called it the politics of effectively communicating a message. Um, it would help with working with supply chains. So some of the questions that came today were, how do you ensure that you have the right and the available resources within the communities that you're designing for, right? It will help you achieve the design certainty and get that manufacturing consistency, which would then translate to quality um, assurance. Um, what I'm going to end with is this image of people like our finalists today who were part of a big work and um, big engineering work experience uh, week, which um, I had the wonderful opportunity of running last year and this year. And to see so many people from 25 odd countries working together to come up with housing solutions was hugely humbling. And so for anybody who is thinking of solutions for our global and population, you are on the right track because there is a massive, um, you know, of inspired students who all over the world want to make our world a better place and are working incredibly hard to ensuring that, um, which is hugely, hugely inspiring. I'm going to stop there um, and say thank you. And hopefully we, um, we can get back um, onto the main program and hear um, who our winners are today and also from Nav, um, who is um, the founder of um, the, the, the Washing Machine Project, um, because, you know, I, I'm just um, in awe of the work that he has done um, so far and continues to do. Thank you very much. Great, fantastic. I'm just going to see if we, right, so I, I'm just seeing that our judges are going to be joining in a few minutes. So it'll be great to have our teams up and I'm happy for you to turn your videos on and I would love to get any questions if you have any questions. Great, super. Alrighty, so I'm, I'm going to ask our um I'm going to ask our finalists if they've got any questions because I, I was really hoping that there was some stuff that kind of resonated with you guys in there. Feel free to turn your 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 computers on uh, your your videos on Hi. and ask me any questions. Kai, you've got a question. Great. Um, no, more of a comment. I just want to say thank you very much for the presentation. And I think it's given me a lot of insp inspiration to actually innovate more myself and be more hands-on and actually get out there and do things, which I think what you really do is so great. And um, thank you for that. It's been very inspiring. Thank you very much, Kai. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. And then great to see. Great to see. I, just as I said, guys, I, I've been really, really impressed. So 
huge congratulations yeah i'd love to take any more questions if you guys if you guys have got questions I, uh, I hear the judges are two minutes away so we've got some time i was, I was just gonna ask um did you face any sort of challenges working with so many people from so many like different uh, like countries and, and, and backgrounds and perspectives or did you find that uh, I guess the opposite like like it was an advantage that they were all um, from you know, su such a wide array of faces. Okay cool that's, that's a good one actually Callum because but, but you know what the great thing about you know innovating and the great thing about engineering is it's such a universal language right so I guess like with like law right you need to understand the law of the land you know but with engineering right it is especially in the built environment and um, you know yes of course there's you know the, the different peculiarities that sometimes you have to think through but the actual core engineering is such a universal language so um, I would say you know there is more collaboration than challenges um, yes, there are some times that, you know, things were lost in translation, but mm -hmm. in terms of the enthusiasm, in terms of, you know, the ambition to, you know, build something and, you know, have something, an end product at the end of the day, you know, there was always that collaboration. Um, yeah, so that, that, would, that would definitely be my, 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 my comment on that, yes. And, I, and, and sometimes, right, just as I said, the team has to be right. Right. You know, if the team is not right, you know, yes, you would come again, you know, against challenges. But when the team is right, you know, it, it sometimes is just magic. It really is. Yes. How, how, how would you know if the, the team is wrong? Like. Yeah. So, OK, good question. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and actually, sometimes, right, you have to go through the motions of. The design process right but but for me the passion and the resilience are always you know a good way to to be able to 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 to, to judge your team right you know you always have to ask people what their main focus is and um, and also you want people bringing different skills to the table right um, and, and it's nothing personal but what you want is people who are willing to bring different skills people who are willing to learn as well to be able to say actually um you know this is what you know this is the skill i'm, I'm bringing to it or i really want to learn about something new and different right yeah. so I, i'm gonna go pursue that and bring it back to the team but there, there has to be that kind of you know combined you know um and and, and common passion on the project as well yeah perfect thank you great and we've got our judges. Judges, welcome back. How 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 was that? I, I'm trying to I'm trying to work out from the expressions <laughs> on your faces. <laughs> Dramatic. How how easy or how difficult that was? Poker face. Po <laughs> poker face. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Okay. Time great. time was running out for all the good content which we had, so we had to. Yes, push yes, time. yes. That that we're, is always. We're the all challenge. still talking, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we only picked mild fights. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's always a challenge. Great. So, um, at this point, um, I'd like to introduce the founder of the Washing Machine Project now, um, to to to, to stage to our virtual stage, um, so that he can announce our winners. Drum roll, welcome to the stage, Nav. Thank you, and, uh, and uh, really, um, I'm really blown away with the, the finalists uh, today. Thank you so much for your effort, and thank you so much for putting so much uh, passion behind uh, solving some of the world's most uh, pressing problems. We, we devised the, the People Planet Product Student Design Challenge. Um, for people like you, uh, you know, um, just a bit of story and background on me. I graduated a few years back, and I felt like um, there was nothing available for me um, to 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 solve some real world issues. And um, it's really humbling to see so much great talent coming out of universities today, and so conscious about the env environment that that you're entering and and wanting to make a the difference. Um, I'm here in Lebanon right now uh, on the Syrian border um, 
working with refugees directly. And they need, I'm telling you, they need innovations like yours. Every single one of yours innovations is, is needed. So whether you win something or not, uh, don't don't feel like uh, this is uh, in vain. You know, keep keep pushing because people need uh, people like you in the world. Um, uh, it was tough. Uh, uh, the judges deliberated. There were a few uh, curveballs, and um, uh, I'm going to uh, announce the, the third place uh, winner first. And the judges decided that this uh, pitch was engaging. It um, was packaged really well. Um, uh, the originality was interesting. And it's Joe Baker. So thank you, uh, Joe Baker. Well done uh, to Joe uh, on, on, that, on that third place win. Uh, thank you so much. Really, really, thanks, Joe. Um, uh, if you'd like to uh, share maybe uh, 20 seconds of your thoughts, Joe. Yeah, I, I'm growing up, I've always wanted to help people. I've always been engaged and I'll, I really want to get involved in humanitarian or environmental engineering when I leave. I'm in my final year and this will be a great motivation for me to work really hard and show engineering can make a difference. Thank you. Great. Well, thanks, Joe. Well done again for your, the third place. The, the second place uh, was um, uh, a really a, a tough decision. The, these guys were uh, chosen for the real simplicity of the design and well-rounded uh, uh, pitch and Team Century. So well done to P Team Century for coming uh, second. Uh, uh, Team Century, would you like to say a few words? Great. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. sorry uh, we are actually in the same room. That's same room. Yeah, I got uh, it. So thank you so much for the opportunity as well. I think for both of us, it's a great encouragement um, and as well as a recognition for our past as a design engineers. Uh, yeah, overall, it's, uh, it has been very challenging for us to think of new idea and going through different iterations of ideas. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thanks, Team Century. Well, okay. Um, in first place, um, th this uh, pitch um, was pragmatic. It had a user validation. It was very focused. Um, it uh, took into account users and costs. Uh, and it's Kai. Um, well done to, to Kai coming first. Um, we really loved the fact that this was uh, tested with users and, and it had a roadmap with um, local manufacturer and things like that. So Kai, well done. Um, thank you. I'd like to say a few words, please, Kai. Awesome, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, as an engineer, I've always wanted to, basically my goal um, in becoming an engineer was basically to always help society through my innovations and designs and this opportunity has been so great that I could actually do that and I'm looking really forward to my design being deployed and helping people all around the world and I also really want to say thank you to RS Components and the Washing Machine Project for a great organization and support. I feel like without them it wouldn't be impossible and I'm actually really really excited now just to keep helping society through all my designs and innovations and I'd also like to thank the University of Cape Town for giving me this opportunity and my friends and family for the support throughout the project. And thank you to you, Nav, I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Kai, and, and well done to the three winners. Um, I also wanted to uh, congratulate the, the, the three runners up. You guys are amazing. And like I said before, all of these ideas are needed and, and uh, have uh, a place in, in the context that, that we are applying our innovations in. So well done for taking part. Um, I also wanted to quickly finish off by giving thanks to the, the grassroots education team, uh, Iz and Amy and everyone. Uh, you guys are amazing. Uh, uh, thank you for putting this on. Um, this also wouldn't be possible without supporters, Alvi, uh, Shark Ninja and, and Proto Labs. Um, Really, really appreciate you guys coming on board with this 
competition. Um, the judges, thank you so much. Um, really uh, value your expertise as well as the UN representation as well. Thank you. Um, and, and finally, to our wonderful host, Yuende, uh, who is the keynote speaker. And I'm sure I'm really looking forward to the recording. Uh, and so I'm going to listen back to that as well. So thank you to, to, to Yuende as well. Uh, it's over to you, Yuende, to, to close us up. Oh, great. Fantastic. That That is, do you know what? Today has really, really set me up for the weekend. I, I, I'm going to be doing things with, with a bit of that extra spring in my step. Um, and, 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 and just also because, you know, um, I, I, I'm in a virtual room with people who um, have huge, massive love for, you know, solving problems. They're doing it. Um, there's huge purpose in everything that, you know, you know, everybody here is doing um, our finalist today. Um, this is the continuation of great things to come. Um, I, I want to rename the washing machine project to the great washing machine project, right? Can we put the great in front of it? Because there's no doubt that it's going to take over the world and really shift the thinking um, in terms of how we solve problems. I mean, so, I mean, these problems have been around for years, right? Um, and, and the fact that we are now seeing the uptake, you know, and, and, and the media wants to be involved, everybody wants to be involved, is, you know, testament to the fact that good solutions have their place in our world today, right here and right now. So thank you to everybody who's been part of this journey. Thank you to everybody watching on LinkedIn, Facebook. Watch this space. Um, continue to follow RS Components and um, Grassroots, um, the Washing Machine Project, our finalists today, because um, there's no doubt that you would uh, continue to be inspired um, by, by what they do. Thank you. Bye from me. Um, great to see everybody. Bye from me uh, and, and take care. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Let us know about your progress uh, and good luck. <laughs>